Hi guys, I'm Bree. And I'm Allie. This is Off Script. If you think about it, books are potential scripts for movies. When this adaptation happens, typically it's disappointing because they went off script. In this series, we will be talking about how off script they went. Too long of a title. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> Like, it's not even easy. Like, we could say ballad and we'd know what we were talking about. Yeah. Like, what do we do? People. People or wedding. Hate. Or hate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Wow. 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 Oh, my gosh, you guys. Hi. <laughs> Welcome <laughs> to Off Script. No, we did it wrong. <laughs> Are we supposed to go? Hi guys, I'm Bree. I'm Allie. I thought, Dang and this it, is off script. You're right. <laughs> I thought it was welcome to off script. I'm Bree. I'm or Allie, and this is a podcast. Oh, we could do that. I don't know. I feel like we say it different every single time. We do, and I swear, in ballad, we were like, we should say hello. I read, yes, this I think, is Bree. This is Allie, and then that. Yep, <laughs> but that is definitely what we said. Yeah. I'm just so used to our original. Dang nap. I don't even know. I'm Allie. I'm Bree. <laughs> we don't know what we're doing. <laughs> no, we don't. <laughs> Been doing this for <laughs> three years? Um sort of. Three recording three. No. Yeah, yeah no. I right. I don't know. Twenty twenty one is when we started. Yeah. Three yeah. years. Three wow. years. I don't know. Crazy. Uh -huh. Insane. Yet we still don't know, guys. <laughs> no, we don't. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, this anyways. is a podcast. Where we compare books to their movies. What are we comparing today, Allie? The people we hate at the wedding. Yeah. This is a fun one. It actually really is. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. quite different and the same. Yes. I know. It's... Yeah. So, ooh, yes. It should be a fun episode. Oh, it definitely is going to be. Okay. I have a picture. Paint it. I'm going to paint the picture. Um, Riley, she comes home from school one day and she's like, Mom, we read Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs in class today. <laughs> I'm like, oh, yeah? How was it? She's like, well, first off. It is all in black and white. There is no color. I was like, oh. <laughs> and then she's like, and there's no Steve and there's no uh, Sam. And like, and the, I was like, did the whole class, were they all upset? They're like, she said, yes, they were. And <laughs> I just thought, what an applicable story for our <laughs> podcast. <laughs> did you tell her this is what me and Aunt Breed? <laughs> I did. I was like, now you know what it's like on our podcast. <laughs> She's like, it's dumb. You ruin your movies. I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, that's, that's on our list, actually. It is. Mm -hmm. yes. Because my, my crush. <laughs> How could we not do one with Bill Hader in it? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> uh, oh, girl, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, anyways. So that's what's going on in our life. That's our little picture, that's our life picture. update picture for you. Mm -hmm. Okay, shall we start this book? Movie? Let's do it. Duo? Yeah. Okay. So the synopsis is the family that family tensions ramp up among a sibling. Among, <laughs> let me, gosh. I thought you were going to have it. I really did too. It's, just, it's only a sentence. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what would life be if I could actually read? <laughs> oh. Family tensions ramp up among siblings in the week leading up to their half sister's wedding. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. We got author Grant Ginder. 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 I would say Ginder. Ginder. Okay. Mm -hmm. Director Claire Scanlon. Mm -hmm. Okay. Screenplay writers Lizzie Molino Loglin. And Wendy Molino. Hey, that name sounds familiar. It does sound familiar. <laughs> I wonder where we've heard that before. Hmm, Loglin. Hmm. Mm -hmm. 
audiobook reader Dan Bittner and Christine Hevman. Hevman? Did I spell Van? that right? <laughs> it seems like it's missing some vowels. <laughs> Oh, look. Nope. It's not. <laughs> okay. Vam. H-V-A-M. Mm-hmm. Okay. Did you listen to this one, too? I did, actually. What yeah. were your thoughts? She, I really liked her. At some points. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I kind of went in because I watched it first. Oh. And so I went in with their personalities and their voices already in my head Mm -hmm. i do think dan did a good job at sounding like shoot i can't remember ben platt i think that's his name i know his first name is ben at least he sounded a lot like him but she was the brother yeah paul Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah but she except for i felt like she was definitely alice's she had alice's bunk okay yeah i thought they were okay yeah i mean they weren't they weren't like top notch and they weren't yeah. bottom tier either so they exactly were, yeah. i i wasn't riveted by their storytelling but yeah. i also wasn't bored out of my mind yeah definitely mm-hmm. okay book came out june 6 2017 movie november 18th 2022 that is a five-year difference wow i think right yeah that's five years mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. okay and which first? Well, I just said I've watched it. <laughs> I I've was like, watched. I read it. <laughs> I read it first. Mm-hmm, you did. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Man, oh man. <laughs> we wanted to switch it up. We did. <laughs> and what were your thoughts? I feel like you and I are going to have the same feelings. I can't really answer my thoughts without giving away because I really liked one and not so much the other. Agreed. Yeah, I, I can't really say anything. <laughs> I was going to try. I was going to try. And then I was like, mm, hold on. There's no way to really say that. So stay tuned at the end and we'll give our real initial thoughts with our preference. Yeah. Will we remember to do that? Who knows? Probably. Not. <laughs> <laughs> so why did we pick this movie book? I know the story, but by why you chose this one. Because someone highly suggested us do oh. this one. Yes, I did. And we jumped on the opportunity. Yes, we did. Are you intrigued? I hope. <laughs> <laughs> now, unfortunately, so this is an Amazon Prime movie. This wasn't a, two theaters. I don't know if that's the reason, but. IMDb only had five fun facts oh. and two of them weren't even that fun. One of them was Great. the good place mm. matchup. They're like, hey, th- Kristen Bell and what's her name? Darcy worked on the good place together. I'm like, yeah, great. Everybody knows that. <laughs> I was like, I knew that's why they put her in that <laughs> <I know>. scene. <laughs> so I only have three fun facts for you guys and that makes me quite sad, but that's all I got for you. So mm-hmm. my alley super fun facts are a little sad today because I, I only have three facts. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So in the scene where Alice is watching Jonathan in a meeting at work, we hear the song The Wire by the band Haim. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The actor who plays Jonathan starred in the music video. Oh, funny. Yeah. There you go. Fun fact. I love that. Annie Murphy was originally attached (gasps) as Alice. Attached. Why would they put attached? (laughs) Uh, Because that's she was attached to the piece. That's how they say it. It's it's lingo. lingo. Yeah. It's Hollywood speak. Who is Annie Murphy? She is Schitt's Creek. Oh my gosh. She would have been so good. She would have been amazing. Starts Alexis. Thank you. Yes, Alexis. She would have been great. I know. I was not planning on recasting, but. I might have to recast. I actually think I am. Just wait till we get to cast for me. Oh, my Lanta. The photo in the credits is Ben Platt and his real life partner, Noah Galvin. Cute. With the the little true love heart on it. Aw. Cute. That's adorable. Those were my fun facts. Sorry, there are only three. Well, one of them made me quite sad. Okay. (laughs) I didn't fix this. (laughs) Sorry. Okay. (laughs) So voice to text, right? So, you know, 
Alice usually turns into Allison, right? Yeah. My brother's name is Paul and he's gay. <laughs> so my first note is Allison and Paul are on the phone <laughs> talking. I'm like, and I, you're like, no, we're not. <laughs> I know. I guess I subconsciously did not change that. Anyways, <laughs> so I jumped. I was too excited. You really were. Okie dokie. Let's do it. Yeah. All right. Kicking off with the book. Actually, let's kick off with the movie. The movie starts yeah, first. The movie starts first because it also starts very differently. Yes. So in the movie, there's a narrator. The narrator gives us backstory that you actually hear throughout the book. It's just kind of all right at the start in your face. Like, boom. Mm -hmm. Here you go. And so you see the family when they're all kids. Mm -hmm. And it's actually pretty cute. It was so cute. Yeah. The stepsister comes and they're doing Santa photos. But then because they're not together all the time, they're like, let's get all of the holiday photos done now. <laughs> so they're like at the mall. And they're like holding, holding up a line. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. That's how that starts. And then you want to guess my next note? You love the music. Yep. Soundtrack. Soundtrack is great. <laughs> literally <laughs> it was a good soundtrack i liked it a lot mm -hmm. okay. okay so that didn't happen in the book no the book kicks off with alice and paul they're on the phone their brother and sister and they just got wedding invitations to their stepsister's wedding they're trying to figure out how much she spent on them because <laughs> she's bougie and she has a rich dad and all this sort of stuff and they're talking about going to london for the wedding but they don't really like their stepsister, as I said, because she's bougie. And uh, Alice and Paul had, see, I just to say it too fast. <laughs> Alice and Paul had a normal, like, you know, childhood, childhood, blue collar childhood. And Alice told Paul, you have to go because I'm a bridesmaid and I have to go. And he's like, oh, I don't know if I can go. I'm camping that weekend in the movie. Alice was not asked to be a bridesmaid, but pretty much the rest of that happens. She was asked to be maid of honor, but not till later, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. No, in the start, she says, she asked me to be maid of honor, but that was when we were like seven. Oh, that's right. <laughs> yeah. So it's kind of there, but she's not actually in the wedding. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yep. You're right. Yeah. And Alice didn't want to go either. Whereas mm -hmm. she didn't want to go in the book. But, but she, she was she always like going to go. Yeah. Where she was actually trying to get out of it in the movie. Not really, but sort of. Mm -hmm. Like you got that feel. I did. I didn't. I I felt like she wanted her brother to like she wanted to connect with her brother in that way. Um, but that she was always going to go. Because okay. she knew family obligations. Okay. Okay. Plus it also then meant a little side excursion for her and Mr. Loverboy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So <gasps> what? Imagine if Annie Murphy did play. <gasps> yeah, that would have been so fucking cute. <laughs> what? We have to finish our thoughts for those that have no idea what we're talking about. The main. I know. What's his name? I can't remember. <laughs> David name. from. Uh... No, not David. <laughs> David's her brother. It's his. Oh my God. Why can't I think of his name? I love him. In oh, show. I was thinking replacing Paul and making him David. So we weren't on the same page. But, but Dennis is her boyfriend. Dennis is her boyfriend from in Sh Shits Creek. Creek. Yeah, her like fiance dude. <laughs> and so just keep dude, him in there. Hell, let's just cast this whole movie with the Shits Creek <laughs> cast. We'll be solid. <laughs> that's hilarious anyways oh my gosh okay so this book follows um different chapters for different people so now we're following paul who is the brother as we said so paul works as this anxiety counselor center and ocd basically dr goulding he's very controversial with his practices because he's basically like throw all your fears at you and deal with it rather than like coming up with a solution on how to deal with it like it's just like deal with it so mm -hmm. wendy is paul's patient right now and she has major fear of germs and she has to pick up trash with her bare hands and then she has to step in the trash can and just stand there with all yucky food and garbage all over her <laughs> yeah that, that would be gross for me and that, i'm not a germ exactly <laughs> and so throughout this 
his chapter, we also get flashbacks on how um, Paul could have uh, had a counseling job anywhere when he lived in New York, but he followed his boyfriend, Mark, to Philadelphia. And Mark basically said, I'm moving. You can come if you want, but if not, I wish you the best. And like all of, because he's, what is Paul? He's like a count. Counsel, he works in like therapy so all mm-hmm. his therapy friends are like red flag red flag yeah. and he's like no and he goes and he also keeps getting these phone calls from alice and one's from an indiana number he has no idea assumes it's a telemarketer but that's where he's at in life <laughs> <laughs> i don't like mark so much like from that first point i yep. was like paul yep you could do better mm-hmm. so Basically, this happens. You just see a quick little glimpse. Paul Paul's job in the movie is pretty, like one scene, and that's it. I know, maybe I so two. S- I was I actually know. sad about that. I know his his job scenes were hilarious. I know. I was actually thinking. Mm-hmm. I was like, I could have a whole book on just his job. Like, I would <laughs> eat that up. <laughs> yeah. Plus, his the relationship he ends up getting with Wendy is sweet too. Yeah, I agree. But you see her standing in the trash can. And he knows that the number that's calling him is his mom because he told Alice to tell mom to stop calling. Uh huh. So now we're with Alice and she is dating her married boss. She calls Paul and lets him know that their mom is trying to call him. And he realizes now, oh my gosh, she just bought a phone in Indiana to trick me to answer it. And Alice was like, okay, whatever. I got to leave for my date. So mm-hmm. she shares with her, with Jonathan, how upset she is at her brother and mom for all this fighting. And her dad died three years ago. And Paul was not happy with how his mom acted after the uh, his death. And Alice's dad died of gall bl- gallbladder cancer. And there was something that happened in Mexico City. We don't know yet what it is. And we learned that Alice and Jonathan's story on how they got together, which was she basically was brand new and they just started going at it. (laughs) Yeah. In the movie, basically, after her phone call with Paul, her and Jonathan go out on a date. So this doesn't really happen. Nope. Not really any of that. Mm -mm. And he already knows what happened in Mexico City. Yeah, he does. Does it happen in Mexico City? In the movie? <laughs> well, in the movie, it's not the whole story that happens in Mexico City. No. It's just the main ending. Yeah. We'll get... We'll, yeah. yeah. All right. Now we're following Donna in the book. And Donna is their mom. And she is dress shopping and can't find anything to wear. And we learn about her past and how she was married to Enrique, who was very rich and lived in France and they had Eloise together, but he cheated on her and wouldn't leave his mistress. So she got divorced and took Eloise back to Indiana. And then she met Bill and they sort of fell in love. I mean, they fell in love, but she was never in as as happy. Yeah. As she was when she was rich with Enrique and She goes home from dress shopping and she gossips with her neighbor friend and Janice is the friend and she picks up the phone to call Paul because he won't answer his mother's phone call. In the movie, well, one thing in the book too when she's dress shopping is she comes up with this elaborate story about how her ex-husband is actually dead. Oh yeah. That does not happen in the movie. Mm -mm. In the movie, she's telling the person who's helping her in the fitting room all about her husband and how she's going to see him at the wedding and how she hasn't seen him in years. And so she wants to make sure that she looks real good. (laughs) (laughs) And this is also when you find out that Donna's friend gave her pot to try. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Whereas in the book, you'll kind of find out that she's (laughs) kind of a pothead. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) And then instead of... (laughs) One of my favorite scenes in the movie. Instead of her friend picking up the call, Paul, she sends Paul a like, oh, yeah. one millionth text. And she ends up sending him a knife. Yes. <laughs> like a sword <laughs> knife thing. So, and Paul's like, what the hell is she sending me this for? That's <laughs> so funny. Uh, made me laugh. Would you so like hard. want to text your mom back after that and be like, what? 
<laughs> yeah, I would. I would be like, are you okay? I don't know. Okay. So now we're with Paul in the book. And Paul and Mark and another couple all go to a bar together. And Mark shares all about this drama Paul and his mom are having because Paul won't answer his phone. And the other couple's like, why won't you answer your phone for your mom? And Mark's like, Ugh. because his dad died and uh, his stepsister got everything. And uh, Alice and him didn't get anything. Like he basically like condescendingly told Paul's story. And so they watch this couple go and pick up a guy and take him back to their house to have a threesome and <laughs> this is like a regular thing for them so it's nothing like oh my gosh that just happened but what is oh my gosh is that paul's like i think it's totally healthy and paul's like what wait did i say paul said that mark said how he thinks <laughs> it's totally healthy and paul starts freaking out he's like what are you talking about because this is a 180 but of course one of mark's prestigious uh what word am i looking for prestigious Learn, learn learner learn teacher student no Te oh his boss no was it his boss who said it it was just a prestigious like educator Educa we'll just say that <laughs> it wasn't an educator it was someone wrote a paper what do you call those people researcher oh some prestigious researcher wrote this paper about how marriage you know you're not supposed to be tied down to one person you it's important for our bodies to explore many and Paul's freaking out about this. He's like, what if you leave me? And all this sort of stuff. <laughs> so they're back at Paul's back at work the next day. And um, he's talking to Wendy about this and all this sort of stuff. And she's able to stand in the trash can for 20 minutes because he's talking to her and distracting her. And But she's able to do it. And she's so excited. She uh, gives him a hug and a kiss or just a kiss. I think in the book, just a kiss. Mm -hmm. And um, he's called into his boss's office and he's like, well, you'll be working with a new client now. Sorry. Mm -hmm. that happens ish it's just that when they're at the bar together they don't go to a bar they go to a play oh it's a play yeah oh I, oh duh yeah that's where he gets the text yeah. and then they go and get drinks after yes all right at the drinks is when the third person comes with their friend and that's when paul and mark start talking about that and then they go back to their house and mark's like wouldn't you be into that and he's like no so it like happens just not as in depth and thoroughly as that. <laughs> yes. All right. So we're with Alice and she's at grief group. And this is because she had a miscarriage six years ago in Mexico city. And the grief counselor asks her to share because she never does. And she's reluctant, but she shares about Alejandro and how they met. And she was at her dream job and, uh, eventually they got pregnant and he was wonderful. He was so excited, but he said, I'll support you with whatever you do. And she was feeling lots of things, but she was like sadistically <laughs> excited <laughs> because Eloise can't have kids. And so she's like, well, now I have a kid. I have something Eloise can't have. Mm -hmm. Oh, gosh. What a yeah, great relationship. Great. Yeah. <laughs> and so it was yeah. nearing the end of her pregnancy and she stopped being able to feel the heartbeat. She goes in and she ended up having to have a stillborn because they couldn't do surgery due to complications. And um, afterwards, she was really quite mean to Alejandro and blamed him and all this sort of stuff. And he ended up leaving her and she has no idea where he is. And then Eloise never showed up to support her in when she was grieving. She sent like a little message or flowers or something. And that was it. Yeah. In the, as someone who watched the movie first and then read the book, this was such a shock. <laughs> really? Yeah. I was like, whoa, that all happened. Because in the movie, it's just a miscarriage. Right. You don't find oh, out the yeah, backstory. Yeah. You don't yeah. find out that it came from like... You find out that the guy leaves her uh -huh. and all of that, but you don't find out all of this story. And I was like, they flipped the story a bit to make it. So he was blamed her mm -hmm. for the miscarriage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so the grief group doesn't happen. <laughs> yep. And her being excited about Eloise not being able to have kids and her having kids does not happen either. Nope. Okay. Now we're with Paul and flashing back between him working with his new client who is terrified of driving. So, and the other flash 
in between is with Mark talking, having a conversation with Mark. So with Mark's conversation, okay. It was Paul asking if Mark, like, aren't you freaked out at the possibility the threesome could end the relationship? And Mark's like, no, of course not. I don't think it would. I'll, boasty <laughs> irritating like he is mm-hmm. and um flashing back to his work dr goulding is yelling at paul because he his, this treatment for this poor guy is to throw uh mannequins at this car as he's driving because this guy's terrified that he's gonna hurt someone when driving so why not throw mannequins at him while he's driving and he wasn't throwing <laughs> him good enough and dr goulding kept yelling at him and finally paul chucked when it right at his face and broke his nose i wish that happened in the movie i'm shocked it didn't like this was like one of the only comedy parts of the book yeah i'm like perfect put it in a comedy movie and it wasn't (laughs) in it no instead we just see wendy's happy that paul has cured her of her germophobia and she gets out of the garbage can and gives paul a hook (laughs) that's it (laughs) And Dr. Golding calls him to the office and fires him. <laughs> yeah. I guess he asked him for a, a temporary leave. I guess it wasn't a fire fire. Was it? No, it was a fire fire. Was it really? Yeah. Oh, he just worded it fancy. Yeah. Like an unpaid leave. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's... Okay. Yeah. They tricked me too. Yeah. I would have gone back to work and be like, no, no, no. <laughs> I'm back. <laughs> you said it was temporary. I'm yep. back. <laughs> All right. So we're with Donna. And she's smoking a joint (laughs) and she gets a phone call from Paul and this incurred a bunch of flashbacks. So Thanksgiving a couple years ago, Bill had just died and, but Alice and Paul are there and they're all together and Alice is drinking a bunch. Paul is pissed because Donna got rid of all the things that reminded her of Bill and then flashback to Bill's funeral and Alice is taking extra doses of, of her antidepressants. Paul is getting up to talk about and give a eulogy. <sighs> flashback farther to the reactions <laughs> of Bill and Donna finding out that Paul is gay. And Donna was very supportive. But Bill said he better knock it off or he's not allowed to come home. And Donna was like, you will not say that to our son. I will leave you if you show him any less love than you do regular like already and i'll tell them exactly why i left you and so he goes on putting on an act for however long he lived for after that back to the future (laughs) nope just great movie (laughs) back to the funeral i wonder if that's a movie that could be a movie back to the future (laughs) why not (laughs) i was like ali yes back to the future is a movie (laughs) All right, back to the funeral and how much she loves her son. And uh, she never told him about how Bill acted because she wanted to keep Paul safe. And she did tell Eloise, but she made her promise not to tell Paul at all. And then back to Thanksgiving and Paul's pissed and uh, says, you want to erase Bill from your life because you're ashamed of him and that you downgraded from Enrique. And she's like, yep. And Paul left back to the president president back to the present (laughs) and paul is on the phone and he says okay i'm going to the wedding because i just lost my job broke my boss's nose none of that happens except paul does call his mom to tell her that he's going to the wedding yep Mm, now we're with mark we're with mark we haven't been with him yet Mm -hmm. and man did this chapter make me hate him (laughs) i know i know i was like oh we get to be with mark maybe this will like give some insight yes no he's just a douche i don't like him in the slightest (laughs) no so mark's a teacher and he loves that all the kids flirt with him and he's reading an email from someone that he's been chatting with online and they get to meet face to face because he's been because this guy lives in london and he's been encouraging paul to go to his sister's wedding even though he, he has not wanted to it's like no it'll be great it'll be great because mark has a second agenda Mm -hmm. Um, so they eventually go to London and they meet up with this guy and he plans on having a threesome with Alcott because they're going to live or stay at his place for the next (laughs) two weeks. Yeah. Yeah. And Paul shares the story about how he lost his job to Alcott and he's cracking up, which is really annoying, Mark. And Mark talks to Paul about how, isn't Alcott so fun? Paul's like, I know exactly what you're doing. Like he was not being subtle about it at Mm -hmm. all. Mm-hmm. 
So you don't find out that Mark is a teacher who loves kids flirting with him? Mm -mm. Or that how he met Alcott? He just like basically is like, I have a friend here in England who's going to take us in for the next few weeks. Isn't that so nice? That's it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're with Alice. Maybe I didn't even write about it. Ay, ay, ay. <laughs> no wonder I didn't say my notes about it. I've been sitting here like saving stuff. Because <laughs> I'm like, oh, we're not there yet. <laughs> so in the book, when Alice and Jonathan are going on dates, everywhere they go, she ends up posting about it on Facebook because she wants to make sure that Eloise sees that she's spending a lot of money, even though it's Jonathan's money. Mm-hmm. In the movie, she doesn't even... No Facebook, none of that. Then uh, Jonathan kind of, oh yeah, it's Jonathan who's like, if you do go to London, then we can go together. So then he's the one who kind of tips her in the movie to go. Because then that's Uh why she does the whole underwear scene that doesn't happen. But I love that it happens because it's got Robot Girl from Good Place. Robot Girl. Yeah, (laughs) that's what I put. And then Jonathan makes her think that he'll go to London in the movie. Mm -hmm. Whereas in the book, he's very much like, oh, I can't get there. Oh, no, maybe in two days. Nope, can't do this. Whereas in the movie, it's always, I'm on my flight. Oh, I missed my flight. I'll be in tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. And he was very straight and forward and being like, I can't leave because he's got Mm -hmm. his wife and kids. And he's like, I I wouldn't be able to explain that and everything like that. Mm Mm-hmm. All right, so Alice is on her way to Eloise's wedding, and she's talking to this guy at baggage claim named Dennis, uh, who only has this one scene. This one bit, yep. <laughs> As so, someone who watched the movie first, I was heartbroken. I, know, I believe it. <laughs> I was like, oh, I love this character. Cannot wait. <laughs> I was like, is he coming? Is he coming? He's Never not coming. Again. <laughs> nope. Because listen to how sad. Uh, I mean, I don't blame him for not coming back. Yeah. <laughs> no, me neither. But. Because Alice is staying in a very fancy hotel because she had to impress her sister. So she invites this guy to come. And she goes to pay for her room. And she finds out Eloise paid for it and even upgraded her room. <laughs> and she's pissed. Because she hates getting handouts, especially from Eloise. And she leaves Dennis in the cafe because she's pissed. Like she mm-hmm. she originally was like, I'll go wait at the cafe and I'll go pay for my room and then we can go up. She just leaves him there. I was so glad that the writers changed this. I me too. I was like, Dennis <gasps> is the best. Yes. I love him. Don't break his heart. <laughs> <laughs> so she gets to her room. She starts taking one of her pills, her antidepressant pills, and she begins drinking and She's looking at the room service and she orders five of everything just to rack up a thousand pound bill that her sister's going to have to pay for. But she sends Eloise a text saying, thanks for the room. I have the best sister. Smiley face. The main difference here is that (laughs) Dennis is with Eloise the whole time. Yep. And he's such a good guy. He really is. Uh, Dennis is Eloise's or Eloise's. Dennis is Alice's. (laughs) love interest yes in the movie she does not have one in the book no her love interest is realizing that jonathan's an ass now we're with eloise oh oh okay another thing too that i forgot to mention when they were children it's kind of a key point for the movie that you know that eloise loves taco bell oh yeah yeah I forgot to mention that when they were children. That's also, I forgot to make a note of it until right here. Oh. (laughs) (laughs) All right. So we're with Eloise and she's relieved and excited when she gets this message from Alice because she was really, really nervous that she'd be mad. And ironic. Eloise knows her better than she thinks, but. (laughs) Right. But it's like, okay, Alice, she can't get mad if she's not honest with her. Yeah. That just drives me crazy. But whatever. And so there's an incident long ago where she sent Alice a prom dress and it was like a really fancy dress and she sent her necklaces, a necklace with it and everything. And she just wrote a note, you deserve this. And instead she gets the dress back, cut the little straps and ungrateful little <laughs> bee she is. <laughs> mm-hmm. 
All right. Then we learn background and how she works with charity and well, her like fiance. What, sorry. What's stupid too, though, is like your sister's trying to be nice. I know. Like, why are you just like, just because she has more money than you and you had a rougher upbringing? Like, right. So stupid. Yeah, it makes no sense. No. So we learn about uh, Eloise's work with charity and her fiance, Ollie. And she's been working on the seating chart and she just is doesn't know what to do because her dad out of the blue said she's come he's coming to the wedding and now she has to figure out where to put her mom and dad first off seating charts are dumb <laughs> like <laughs> let people figure out where they yeah. want to sit mm -hmm. highly suggest anyone planning a wedding out there don't cause yourself stress just have your reserve tables and then free for all for mm -hmm. everyone else <sighs> anyways <laughs> <laughs> agreed so ollie and eloise are at lunch and she had a falling out with her dad because she was tired of him dating all these floozies. Um, but apparently he's changed and he stopped that. So great for him. And Ollie tells Eloise, hey, I got a job opportunity for Alice. But Eloise is a little nervous because she knows how Alice doesn't like handouts. And um, Eloise goes and picks her mom up from the airport and they talk about Paul and their relationship and how it's going. And she's like, you just got to tell Paul the truth. And she's like, no, I'm not going to do that. And they all met at Eloise's favorite restaurant. And Alice got there first and was freaking drunk already. <laughs> Paul and Mark show up and Eloise can't stand Mark because he is super pretentious. And he's like, I can hurry up and get the table for us. And he could not. <laughs> and they all order drinks because their tables run in late and Donna orders or tells the bartender Paul and his friends order and Paul freaks out and is like um he's my boyfriend and she calls the bartender back and she's like I'm so sorry this is my son's boyfriend and gives like this huge <laughs> explanation about how they live together and all this sort of stuff and Eloise pulls Paul aside and cusses him out and she's like do not screw up my wedding so that was a lot. Sorry. She had a big chapter. Yeah, it really was a lot. And a lot of this doesn't happen. Enrique is who picks up Donna from the airport. Yeah. And they just immediately like she walks right up to him and kisses him because she's high as a kite. And then they go and have sex right there. I mean, I understand. It makes sense for the movie. Why? Yes. Yes, it does. Because literally in the book, it's a chapter with him in it. And if, mm -hmm. if he's such a big character in their lives, he needs more screen time. He needs time. to be in the movie. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Plus, like, nope, I don't know what I was going to say. Okay. <laughs> I thought left quick. And then basically, Eloise, at least we don't know that she's had a falling out with her dad. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't seem like that's a thing. I also think it's funny because the whole telling Paul the truth thing mm -hmm. was kind of the movie's big twist. And like, you're right. This is why. So, so then again, as being someone who watched the movie first and then reading it, I was like, hold on. <laughs> they what? know from the beginning. Yeah, yes. Like, wait, this is something that I just go through the whole entire time knowing. <laughs> wow. That's true. Mm -hmm. And then at the dinner, I absolutely loved Eloise decided that she wanted to play an icebreaker game with everyone so, so awkward would you rather at dinner <laughs> it was so awkward oh uh, it was hilarious it was so good it was so funny and then i also thought it was funny because the movie changes the charity that eloise looks works for uh -huh. in the book it's with kids with a cleft lip but i can't remember what it is i think it's for like disabled kids to be able to go and make art <laughs> Yeah, I think that's what it was. And I was like, why? Why a small change like that? There are quite a few small changes. Mm -hmm. The next note that I have is that Alice is an architect in the movie. When in the book, she's someone who's aspiring to get into film. <laughs> that would be a big change for you. Oh, yes. <laughs> I was like, I would have liked this backstory. <laughs> Give me all of that. <laughs> and then I also loved instead of the bartender that donna explains to about paul 
it is <laughs> some random guy on the street. It's a random guy on the street who ends up being Eloise's coworker. Yes. And she but like she like explains anal sex <laughs> to <him. laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> I couldn't stop laughing. It was hilarious. <laughs> and then I love when Eloise walks up and is like, what's going on? And Paul's like, mom's just over here explaining anal sex <laughs> to the stranger. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but then Eloise kind of, she doesn't cuss them. She doesn't cuss them out, but she talks to everyone and is like, you guys need to be on your best behavior. She is not happy. No. And she blames, well, she doesn't blame, she gets at everyone yep. not just paul yep all of them mm-hmm. okie doke so we're with paul and eloise invited them to her house for drinks but mark said no because they're meeting up with a friend and paul was actually kind of felt bad and he kind of wanted to meet up with eloise but mark does not like eloise at all and so they met up with Alcott and they go to a bar and he pulls out this new type of drug and they start he, at first, Paul's like, uh, no, thanks. Alcott accused Paul of being dull, which Mark mm-hmm. had done earlier that day. So Paul took the drugs. They went to Peer several. pressure is bad. I know. <laughs> don't do it. They went to several bars after that, and they end up going back to Alcott's because they ran out of drugs and his dealer wasn't answering. And Paul's all in his head about this threesome. And so eventually he just kisses Alcott. The threesome happens, and eventually sort of happens eventually Mm -hmm. alcott passes out on his bed none of them climax Mm -hmm. and she whispers i do (laughs) climax (laughs) and paul's like hey well mark we can still and mark's like no i'm tired let's help me make up the bed (laughs) make it up yourself right jerk i know (laughs) in the movie i do think it's really hilarious because the threesome doesn't actually happen like it started but then they end up using paul as a chip table <laughs> yes <laughs> and then it's funny because mark is the one who asked paul if he'll finish him off and paul's like yeah and then he dumps chips on him yes <laughs> i love that <laughs> i did too i was like yes paul his name actually wasn't mark in the movie it was dominic oh how have i not you know, it's funny what that's hilarious huh i never figured that out except <laughs> i literally my next few notes are mark cross hop dominic mark cross hop dominic <laughs> <laughs> and i have no notes in here about his being, name difference yeah yep his name is dominic that's funny wendy's name is also helen oh funny i didn't pick that one out that's okay i only picked that one up because i had to do casting and i was like who the heck yeah. is helen that makes sense okay we're with the alice she's at the bachelorette party and it kicks off with yoga and she's kind of she embarrassed herself by sucking at it and then they're drinking in the car and she embarrassed herself again by making a penis bachelorette party comment (laughs) because Eloise's friends are super snooty and they're chatting and the topic was somehow brought up where she lives I don't remember how it got there but Eloise says oh we hope that she's moving to London soon because Ollie found her a job and this pisses Alice off because she already told her no flashback to a conversation when she told her and see, this is also why I think this is a big story point because I'm pissed off so much at Alice for saying no. I'm like, someone is giving you a film job. <laughs> One of the hardest jobs to get. <laughs> and you're saying no, bitch, if I knew these people, I would take it. <laughs> and it's in London. even before. Right. So at the end of the party, Eloise is a little tipsy, but she gave her a sincere apology for not being there for her during the miscarriage. And Alice kind of just blows it off, though. And she hasn't heard from Jonathan in two days and she's getting pretty antsy. In the movie, Eloise does not apologize to Alice for not coming to her and being there for the miscarriage. And Alice is expecting it and she's like, oh, gets all upset mm-hmm. at her for not apologizing. And then basically the rest of it happens, except for Eloise's friends aren't super snooty. They kind of enjoy Alice. Mm -hmm. So Eloise just kind of blows up at Alice because she's not behaving how she wants her to. Because Alice is making fun of her the whole 
Mm -hmm. like siblings it it didn't Mm -hmm. seem no it wasn't out of the norm Mm -mm. and like the fact that all the friends were laughing too it's just that it made her uncomfortable right but they went alice was also joking about uh eloise's sex life so i could see how be awkward if you're not close sibling yeah yeah but also it's your it's it's your bachelorette party so those kind of comments probably are going to get brought up uh yep (laughs) And they went on like this hot tub boat and all this sort of stuff. So it, was, it looked mm-hmm. like a fun bachelorette party. Mm-hmm. So we're with Mark now and he's thinking about the events that have happened. And Paul said that he liked it, but he was tossing and turning all night. And then he called Wendy and starts crying mm-hmm. about how he made a mistake. And then Mark decided that they're different people. So I'm going to break up with him. He brought Paul to a public place to avoid a scene. And he tells Paul or and then Paul starts telling a story about how he what was it it was like how he kissed someone and he like had to he was so freaked out oh because then they threw up he was so freaked out about stds or something because he's freaking out about stds Mm -hmm. because they didn't use a condom Mm -hmm. and mark just hates this story so it's like before he even finished the story he's like i think we should end things and paul starts freaking out and he's crying which turning mark on but then he gets pissed at him and he's like, oh, well, now there's not going to be any makeup sex. And <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah. Mark's a dick. Yeah. So basically this happens, but not Paul doesn't freak out about STDs. And it's not from Mark's point of view because Mark's not like a titular character in the movie. Mm-hmm. Also, the other thing in the book, Paul kind of like. Paul freaks out and just cries over the breakup. Whereas in the movie, he realizes like, wow, you're a dick if this Mm -hmm. is how you're breaking up with me. So he stands his ground a little bit. Yeah, I think so. But then one thing that's about to happen next time. Oh, in the next chapter is Paul calls Eloise and is like, hey, Mark broke up with me. But that does not happen in the movie. So as Bree said, Eloise is really glad to hear that Mark is not with her brother anymore. Paul called her up and asked if he could stay with her. And when Mark dropped him off, she went up to Mark and said, I hope you're better off because I know Paul will be. And then she goes inside. Um, Paul's like, where's mom? And Eloise made sure that uh, she was out of the house because he, she didn't want Paul to have to deal with her too. And she let him smoke a cigarette in the apartment, even though they're not supposed to, Ollie wouldn't be too happy. She's like, it's okay. Mm-hmm. We, we have, we have spray. It was like a really cute sibling moment. Mm-hmm. And it didn't happen in the movie. No, it didn't. (laughs) Then we're with Paul. And Paul, Alice, and Donna are in the car. They're on their way to the wedding location. I think. Yes? Yes. There was like five parties that happened in a row. Or I was so confused. So you're going to have to help me with these parties. (laughs) I got this. They are on their way to the, like... Location. Yeah. And they're going to stay there for... So for the first week, it was... They were in London where Eloise was at. And that's where the bachelorette party and everything happened. And then... The week is them staying where the wedding's taking place. Okay. So they're at the wedding location. And they have a, do a pit stop. Pa has a cigarette. And Donna's like, can I have one too? And he's like, no, don't make this a moment. I only want to talk to dad. And then he leaves. And then on the way there, he sees a text message from Jonathan, Jonathan telling Alice to stop texting him. And he knew that she was kind of in the same boat he was with a breakup. Because he knows about Jonathan. Yeah, that's my next note. Mm -hmm. Paul does not know about Jonathan in the movie. And it's also really funny because in this trip, they get into a car crash with a cow. I know. (laughs) so funny. (laughs) Because Alice kept reading her messages and she's just the worst. Yeah. (laughs) Like, I do not text and drive people, but she was the worst. (laughs) She was literally just staring at her phone. (laughs) Like, she wasn't even trying to drive. Yeah. She's like, oh, this is more important. <laughs> oh, gosh. Uh, All right. We're there with Donna or we're with Donna and they met Ollie's parents. And then Alice is like, no, not Alice. Eloise says, hey, mom, come here. I need to show you something. And it was her dad. So Henrik <laughs> now shows up. <laughs> yes. In the book. First right. time we meet him. Yeah. Whereas in the movie, he was at the dinner with them. He was at he's who got donna from the airport Uh like he's been prominent this whole time yes so with alice now and she's at a party one of the many parties and she's getting annoyed with everybody 
she doesn't like people. She doesn't like the bridesmaids or anyone. So she goes to find a place to sit by herself and she calls Jonathan and he picks up and he's pissed. His wife found out about them and he is blaming Alice for his wife leaving him because of the Facebook posts and all this sort of stuff. And she's confused. I'm like, well, why is that a bad thing? You said you were going to leave anyways. And he's like, of course, I'm not going to leave her. Don't be stupid about it. Like, that would be crazy. And she's like, well, I had a miscarriage. And then he's like, oh, my gosh, when? Like thinking it's his kid. Mm -hmm. She's like, it was six years ago. And he's like, oh, my gosh. And then she's crying and saying, don't hang up. And he hangs up on her. And Paul comes in. They have this cute sibling moment. And he shares about his threesome. And they just start laughing and have their cute little moment. That doesn't happen in the movie. No, because what's his name already knows about the yeah, miscarriage. Yeah, Jonathan already knows about the miscarriage. And he still at this point is basically telling her that he'll show up at some point. Yeah. You know what you haven't been talking about? It's <laughs> Dennis throughout this whole thing. Because I was like, there's too much. My notes would have been so much. I'll just give it a brief. Uh, so after their first night, well, first day in the hotel room, they have sex, they eat. But then she tells him that Jonathan's her rabbit and people keep calling to for him. <laughs> and like oh. she's calling to check up on her rabbit and all this. And he pieces it together that she's seeing someone. And then... The first time Jonathan is like, oh, sorry, dear, I won't be able to make it today, but I'll come up at this point. She gets with Dennis and they have a night together. And then he's like, "Okay, tell me about this Jonathan, dude. And so she does. But then he like is like, you know, he sucks. He's the piece of trash because she's like, you're going to think I'm a piece of trash. And he was like, no, he is like, it's not you. So then she's like, oh, okay, I like this. Jonathan's probably not coming because he's blown me off a few times. So then she invites Dennis to go with her family to Eloise's wedding. Mm -hmm. She's like, she told me I got a plus one, so I'm going to take you. And then the next morning, Jonathan's like, I'll be there tonight. And so she's like, oh, you know what? My sister, that bitch, she just told me I can't have a plus one. Mm -hmm. And Dennis is like, yeah, fuck that. <laughs> it's yeah. your dude. Like. Or he says, when is Jonathan going to be here? And she's like, no, no, it's not anything like that. And he's like, mm, no, hope you have a good life. And is pissed at her. And that's where we're at now. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're with Donna. And Donna went on sort of a date with Enrique. They went kayaking or and they he boasted about what a great surfer she is. I got you surf lessons. She's like, nope, that wasn't me. So then she was kind of like, oh, this was a bad idea. He's like, no, it wasn't. And he kisses her. And it was such a nice kiss. She says, my French. <laughs> good, good French. Thank you. <laughs> Henrique would be proud. Thanks. <laughs> this does not happen in the movie. No, nope, because they've been kissing this whole time. Mm -hmm. So Eloise basically becomes Bridezilla at this moment. She got 3000 tea lights and they're cream colored. They're not white. She wanted white. And she yells at her wedding planner and decides to go to the party store and pick up the white ones because the party store said yes we have 3,000 white ones she gets there and they're cream and she freaks out at them and she has to bring them back because she needs these candles and uh she's really nervous because she's having second thoughts about getting married but it's only been since her family's there so she's trying to remind herself no it's not real second thoughts it's stress so this happens in the movie Except for the second thoughts are because Ollie does not know that she can't conceive children, which I'm like, how could you be in a relationship with someone for so long mm -hmm. and before you're married, not tell them this, right? In the book, they are talking about how they are going to adopt. Yep. <laughs> in the movie, he has no idea. Yeah. Yes. I also like the bridezilla in the movie aspect because, mm -hmm. um... It happens gradually or like, no, it was like something set her off with the family. Mm -hmm. Was that, no, was that after I think, I think that she was, was pissed. No, it was, that was the night that they were, they got in jail. So it hasn't happened yet. Oh yeah. So Brie will get to it, but this big, huge event happens that mm -hmm. pissed her off with Alice, Donna and Paul. And so she's kind of like, has all these pent up emotions about the family and that's what set her off versus the book it seemed like it was just a bridezilla moment yeah just a hey this because 
they do have her with the tea lights like what the hell this isn't right and yes. that is when she blows up but yeah she's already been like boiling at this point point. and i'm sure in the book she has been as well but it was not as easily yeah. yeah conveyed yes all right we're with ollie now he's been known as a really likable down-to-earth guy and the only downfall is he's had a lot of things given to him. He's had a pretty easy life. And someone from school even yelled at him about this once because she was going through something. And she's like, you don't even know what this is like. And he felt bad about that. So he even spent time reading books to try and learn different aspects of life that he hasn't had to go through. And he's like, you know what? I can't do anything about what I've been given or like I can't change what I've been given. I am. So I'm going to do something with what I've been given. And he, that's when he starts working at charity events. So he gives lots of money to people in need. And he's standing up in his room and he's looking over the party and he sees Donna rolling a joint. <laughs> and he remembers telling Eloise that her mom's a pothead and she was not happy that he said that. And he's looking for Eloise because he just wants to be with her because he loves her. Mm -hmm. And they share about the adoption agencies and he's getting so excited. And um, we find out or he finds her talking to her siblings and his parents. And we hear all about how he's working really hard to make Alice and Paul like him, but it's not going so great, but he's, he's trying. And then he sees Eloise drag Paul into the kitchen and Ollie follows and, Paul is drunk and she <laughs> is yelling because he started talking about the failed threesome <laughs> to her future in-laws. And um, he's just yelling about how he wishes dad was here. And Eloise blew up and tell, told him the truth about Bill. And Ollie feels super awkward because he knew they were not supposed to tell Paul. So Eloise blowing up at Paul and telling him the truth does happen. But that's it. <laughs> He was super drunk and told, talk to the in-laws too. Yeah. 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 But, yeah, but the adoption thoughts didn't happen. Yeah. And trying to like mm -hmm. get him. And Ollie like didn't really try to get the siblings to like him. No, not so much. Yeah. He was just, he was the boy. Yeah. He was just there. He yeah. wasn't the main character. He's who's getting married. That's it. Yep. So now we're with Paul and he's replaying everything in his head that happened with his dad growing up. And how they were really great friends. And after he called and told him that he was gay, how his dad did start acting differently. And then he started thinking about how horrible he's been to his mom. And uh, he was drunk in a bar and he decided to call Mark. But before he could dial, he saw Enrique. And Enrique was kissing some new girl. And Paul goes up to him and is like, does my mom know about this? And Enrique's, oh, she will be okay. It is not meant to be. <laughs> and <laughs> Paul's like, huh. And he starts peeing on his shoe. Actually, it just said he starts peeing on him. So yeah. I assumed it was all over him. I know. <laughs> that makes sense. In the movie, it's just on his shoe. Right. <laughs> and it's in the food pantry where the party is taking place. <laughs> so gross. I, so gross. But also, Henry really doesn't think Donald's going to walk. Right. <laughs> so, yeah, that happens. And this is how Paul ends up going to jail mm -hmm. but at the same time alice and donna are, are in the middle of a fight at this like rehearsal dinner thing because jonathan's wife has come to show up yep. to tell her that she's gonna divorce her husband whereas in the book they stay together <laughs> but instead we get to see freaking awesome why can't i think of her name she plays janice in mean girls uh -huh. she plays Annie in Castle Rock. Uh -huh. She is amazing. I love her. So the second I saw her, I was like, yes. But then <laughs> I read the book and I was like, what? Just wait till my story. Oh. Fun. I'll wait till cast for that part. Okay. Okay. All right. So yeah, now they're all in jail because they, a huge fight broke out and Donna even jumped in on it. Mm-hmm. And so, but in the book, only Paul went to jail. And Alice picked Paul up from jail and they chatted for a bit. And Alice remembers Eloise coming to her room and saying how worried she was because Paul wasn't in his room. And he asked if Alice knew about her, about how dad felt. And she's like, well, I didn't know. She never told me, but I, I definitely guessed. That doesn't happen in the movie. Nope. Because they're all in jail. Yep. And guess who gets them out of jail? Dennis. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Very unhappily. And then Donna's like, who's that? And Alice is like, 
what does she say? She says something so clever. I love it. Something like some nice guy that I... I screwed up. Yeah. Yeah. Something along those lines. Okay, we're with Paul. And he is... Oh. Me. Yeah, you have more. I'm about to end it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so Eloise then uninvites them from the wedding because she's like, fuck it. You guys just fucked that. I don't blame her. <laughs> You're not coming. <laughs> I would uninvite as well. <laughs> And then Henrique also comes to apologize to Donna, whereas in the book, they keep Donna in the dark about what happens. Like, Paul's like, I'm not mm-hmm. going to tell mom. This is not going to happen. And then after Eloise freaks out about her 3000 tea lights, she ends up in Taco Bell. And like the way that Alice, Paul and Donna, who are sitting there waiting for a cab to go home. Because Eloise is uninvited them and Donna's like, can we sneak a peek at the wedding? And Eloise is like, no, she said specifically not to in her letter that the Alice. cop yeah. read to us. So then, oh, I said Eloise, huh? Mm-hmm. That's okay. <laughs> I keep doing that. Uh, but then they get to Taco, or Ollie runs up and is like, we can't find Eloise anywhere. We were hoping you guys would have an idea. But also, like, this is their first time to this country. <laughs> like, why would they know where she's going to run to? <laughs> but they know. She's at Taco Bell. And then Alice stops and is like, hey, can I go in and talk to her? And they're like, yeah, of course. And the whole reason this happens is because Paul and Eloise never have a blow up. So there's no reason for them to make up. Whereas Mm -hmm. it's needed for Alice and Eloise. And then you get a happy ending for everyone. Alice ends up with Dennis with a baby and Eloise and Ollie are together and they visit the States all the time and everyone's happy. Wait, Alice and Dennis have a baby? Yeah. I thought it was Eloise and it was their adopted baby. And Ollie's adopted. In the movie? Baby. Yeah. No, I thought it was their baby. No, it was their adopted baby. Or theirs because they're like, that adoption went really quick. Oh, <laughs> I never caught that. I wanted Alice and Dennis to have a baby. (laughs) So obviously. Uh, Right. So I think that was the closure of she ended up telling Ollie. Ollie and it ended up being okay. Makes sense. Well, I figured they got married. (laughs) Theirs are okay. Well, yeah, but. (laughs) All right. Whereas in the book, it ends with Paul and he's waiting at the wedding chapel and no one's there. Eventually, Donna comes in and says, Eloise doesn't know if she wants to get married. Paul goes out to find her and they're chatting for a little bit. And she shares how she's really nervous because other families have it all put together and she can't even have handle her siblings coming. And she shares about how they've been meeting with adoption agencies and she's really nervous to be a mom and have a husband because she thinks she'll screw that up. And he's like, yes, you will screw it up. But everyone screws it up. The point is you love each other and you guys will be happy. And they hug and get up to go to the chapel. We get no resolution. No happy ending. (laughs) I mean, they got married. Happy. Yeah. Happy. 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 Okay. All right. So first off, let's do it. So our casting, we cast 73 people. Or IMDb did. I did not cast them. (laughs) Allie's like, I take credit for this. (laughs) So first we got Kristen Bell played Alice. I loved her watching it. But now that I know it was supposed to be Annie, Annie was born to play this role. Yes. Okay. So, you know, I read it first. So I was going in expecting drama. Yeah. So all my casting is dramatic. More dramatic. (laughs) That makes sense. I want to tell you i like shrieked as what's her name came in as marissa because that's who i pictured as alice Alice. (laughs) i was like (gasps) she's in this movie what's funny is uh how the audiobook reader read it i could see that for sure yeah what's her name her name is lizzie kaplan yep i love her Mm -hmm. she's great so i i didn't recast because i i didn't officially recast to anyone because yeah. they did good for their comedy mm-hmm. they didn't match the characters yeah. but they did good for the roles that were written for them yeah no i'm here for annie annie could have did that yes but so amazingly. i mean with that Kristen yes. did great too but oh she would have been awesome as it yeah. yeah yep and we have ben platt as paul i fucking love him i think he did so great much. he's such a cutie i didn't have a specific person in mind for paul so that was he did great mm-hmm. yep. he was perfect 
Allison Janning did Donna. She's great. <laughs> she was so funny. But yeah. okay. Funniest part before, like right at the beginning, I'm like, I am picturing Diane Keaton, Mother of the Bride. And then <laughs> legit at the grief group, Alice describes her grief group counselor as a Diane Keaton type, <laughs> like maybe from Mother of the Bride. And I was like, like what? <laughs> That's what I was picturing. But no, nope, Alice and Danning did great for her role. Yep. I agree. Then we have Cynthia. Oh, gosh. Adia. Adai? Adai Robinson. She played Eloise. I loved her. She was She's so sweet. cute. Yeah. I always pictured Eloise as like a blonde well, in the book, it says blonde. Oh, that's probably why. Mm-hmm. But she did really good. I yeah. really liked her. Yeah. Okay. I agree. Isaac D. Benkel. Thank you. Enrique. Mm-hmm. He was good. Yeah. He was, he was a good scummy dude. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Jorma Tacon? 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 Uh, sure. Jonathan. <laughs> okay. So I love him because he's from the Lonely Island. And so like watching it the first time, I was like, yeah, I love him. But then when I read the book my thoughts changed and I would recast Jonathan Oliver. Oh yeah. Interesting. He's a British dude. Yeah. Cause then that's who I pictured the whole time. So then when I watched it again, I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, <laughs> Even though you watched it for us, I was like, I swear it was this guy. <laughs> oh, interesting. Yeah. No, Jarma matched. Oh, I like, I imagined him. No, you know who I imagine? Have mm. you ever seen the mistletones with? Nope. Okay. I 100% imagined, uh, the boss in that movie. That's who I pictured as Jonathan. Okay. Oh my gosh, his name is Jonathan. <laughs> Meant to be. <laughs> Funny. <laughs> All right. Okay. Then we had Karan Sony as Dominic, aka Mark. Dude, I love him as an actor, but he is not when I He's not douchebag material. No, he's I guess he's okay for Dominic, but he's not Mark. No, I agree. And Mark, I pictured I can't. I can't find exactly who I pictured, but I think John Cho is like the closest I can get. Oh, I could see that. Yeah. I pictured just someone who looked like he felt like he was above others. Yep. I legit in my head had someone and I cannot remember what movie they're in Mm -hmm. or anything, Mm -hmm. but I know exactly who it was. They looked similar to the bad guy from Titanic. Oh yeah, yeah. He's not the right age, so I couldn't recast him as him. But yeah. that the char- the actor that I want, I can't even think what movie he's in, looks similar to that. And so, but I agree that he was not a Mark. No, he's too sweet. He's he's the taxi driver from Deadpool. <laughs> you can't exactly. That. <laughs> I like him on uh, the uh, dang it, what's it called? The Daniel Radcliffe show. Oh. Miracle Workers. Yep. He's really funny on every scene of that, too. So I didn't even know he was in that. Yep. I haven't watched that show. It's a cute one. I need to. Mm-hmm. And so, um, yeah, but I was very shocked when I saw that that was him. Mm-hmm. I know. I was. I watched it. Then again, I read it. <laughs> and who he was went out the window. Uh-huh. And so I saw who I have in my head who I can't figure out. And I was like, oh, yeah, that's who it is. And then I went and rewatched the movie. And I was like what right <laughs> that's not it's, you it's because he wasn't super high pretentious like no he was quite dominant and shy and character yeah was just that he really wanted to threesome yeah whereas mark's character was like i'm above this guy i don't need to be with this guy yeah all right then we got dustin milligan as dennis he's so perfect i'm also so glad that he's in this movie he was so cute and I i'm so him. glad they had his storyline me too Mm -hmm. plus if you watch our tiktoks you'll see how excited i was yep it might be just in the youtube video i don't know ali puts those together so i really don't remember no i had more videos than you did so i think i put all of your videos in (laughs) makes sense well then you'll see how much i love him (laughs) i think so i don't know check the youtube check the tiktok Mm -hmm. go watch both of them yeah um then julian ovenden (laughs) Alcott. He was good. Yeah, he was fine. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Did. Mm-hmm. Yep. John Mal. McMillan. Mac- yeah, sure. McMillan. That makes sense. <laughs> was Ollie. He's. I love him. He was good. He's Ollie. A sweetie. Ollie and Eloise were my favorite characters in the mm-hmm. book. And they mm-hmm. did good. Yeah. yeah. He did good. Yeah. 
And then I had to put her on there because Lizzie, Ka- oh gosh, <laughs> Lizzie Kaplan is Marissa. And mm-hmm. I just, like I said, I died. Anything so she's in. Oh, so funny. Yeah. You're like, hey, hold on. <laughs> You're supposed to be Alice. What are you doing? <laughs> Wrong character. <laughs> uh, all right. Is the theme of the book and the movie the same? I mean, the theme. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Do the characters stay true in the movie to how they are written in the book? No. I mean, like, Mark, no. Yeah, that's true. Mark, no. They have the same, like... Enrique, no. Thought. Yeah. Like, where Alice doesn't like her sister and stuff like this. But I feel like movie Alice, to get more of a comedy feel, is a lot more loosey-goosey. And yeah, that's true. Stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um... There's just stuff you have to make characters different versus comedy and drama. Yeah, absolutely. So if you say overarching, like umbrella, yes, they're the same. But Mm -hmm. if you want to get nitpicky, then not so much. Which do you prefer, Allie? Well, anytime it's a choice between a drama or a (laughs) comedy, I'm going to go comedy. So (laughs) I loved the movie. Yeah, the movie was amazing. It was so fun. It was so good. Yeah. Yeah. I watched the movie and I was like, oh, this is going to be great. I can't wait to read the book. (laughs) And then the book started and I was like, huh. Especially since like the first like three quarters of the book is a bunch of backstory and a bunch of like build up to the wedding. (laughs) Whereas the movie is very much like hey, we don't like our sister, but we got to go. And then we're at the wedding and we're in London, like all Mm -hmm. that. So it was funny. Yeah. (gasps) All right. (laughs) All right. We got a sneak peek for you. If you haven't yet, what are you doing? You should rate us. Go review this episode. Mm -hmm. You should also hit that subscribe button so you can get some great content. Go to our website and subscribe to our emails. Yes, where you will get a monthly newsletter kind of telling you what's up. And maybe su- uh, submit a request for some bookmarks. Mm-hmm. So that you can help us spread the word about this awesome podcast. And just go to all our socials and start liking and watching and sharing and yes. following there. Yep. Yeah, we would appreciate that. For sure, Mm-hmm. Wednesday? I think we've got a pretty fun mini soda coming up for you. I think it's super fun. Mm-hmm. We're excited. Super special. Oh, super special. So we're yeah. not even going to, we're going to keep it so special. You have to wait day of. Mm-hmm. To figure out what we're doing. Yes. But we're excited. So. And I'll tell you, I'm nervous. We're <laughs> getting married. <laughs> no, just kidding. <laughs> Uh, no <laughs> what if it was what if that's what wednesdays was it was a live podcast <laughs> wedding from your wedding <gasps> my gosh no nah, not gonna happen <laughs> uh, oh my gosh all right and then monday we have the self-help book self-help Help book <laughs> there you go of he's just not that into you hmm Hmm. Did we know it was a self-help book when we did it? Fuck no. No, that was a fun surprise. Oh, sure was. I started the book before Allie and I was like, what? (laughs) Hold on. I I wanted a nice story. (laughs) Oh, so come take a listen to how that goes. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, that was fun. (laughs) Oh my gosh, you guys. All right. With that, the people we hate at the wedding went went off off script. script. Bye. Bye. Thanks for sticking with us. We hope you enjoyed it. If you did, we would greatly appreciate it if you gave us five beautiful stars, reviewed, and subscribed. You can also follow us on Facebook at Offscript, on Instagram at Offscript Podcast 21, and on TikTok at Offscript underscore pod. Shout outs to Madame Shen Creations for our adorable logo art. And Adam Daniel for our incredible theme song. And to Creative Cinephile Productions for producing our podcast. See See you you next next time. time.